Hello and welcome to this short little video on how to subset or par partition your data. Uh, this is going to follow the handout that's located D2L content in the handout section, partitioning your data. Frequently we need to test subsets of the data. For instance, one may need to compare the heights of males and females, or compare the output temperature for different processes, or test for differences in brain activity under control in two different treatments. Uh, two treatments may be two different levels of coffee or two different drugs. In such cases, the data is usually stored using just two variables. The variable of interest, the measurement variable, and the grouping variable. That grouping variable is the variable that states which of the groups that record or that subject belongs to. In the above examples, the variables of interest are height, output temperature, and brain activity. And the grouping variables are gender, process, and treatment. For each grouping variable, each grouping variable there has two or more levels. Otherwise, it would need a group. It would all be the same value. And those group levels correspond to the groups we wish to compare. In the above examples, the levels are male and female, processes 1 through 4, and treatment levels 0, 1, and 2. Keeping these three things separate is important to understanding how to properly test your hypothesis using the data. And those three things are the measurement variable, the grouping variable, and the levels. And to really emphasize this, if you notice on the handout, it's color-coded. The measurement variables are in red, the grouping variables are in green, and the levels are in blue. And everything else is going to be in black. So let's look at example one. I wish to test the null hypothesis that the average fuel economy for model A is not different from that of model T. And what the data consists of is just two variables, the model and the economy. The first model is the grouping variable, and the second is the measurement variable. The grouping variable has two levels, A and T, correspondingly two models. Now the parametric test, etc. But let's go down to the bottom to how we actually create these two new variables. First thing is we're going to have to name this variable eventually. I call it econ A because it's the economy for model A. Econ A has meaning to me as a variable. You could call it Bob if you want. Bob doesn't have much meaning. Then economy, that's the measurement variable. Then a bracket. Then model, which is the grouping variable. Equal equal, that is indeed a double equal sign. No space between them. And then in quotation marks, the level of that grouping variable. Level A in this case. And then a closing bracket. And again, the brackets are important. So for econ t, it's economy, the measurement variable, bracket model, the grouping variable, equal equal, in quotation marks, the level t, and then a closing bracket. So when I run these two lines, I'm going to have two new variables, econ a and econ t. Econ a will hold all of the economy values corresponding to those model a cars. Econ T will hold all the economy values for all the Model T cars. It's as easy as that. Example 2, something a little bit more complicated. I'm studying the effect of four fertilizers on corn yield. In this, we see that the measurement variable is going to be yield. That's the variable of interest. The grouping variable is going to be fertilizer, hence it's green. And there's four fertilizers. A, B, C, and D. Those are the levels of the fertilizer. Notice we've got four levels in this case. So let us have a null hypothesis. Fertilizer A is the same as fertilizer B, which means I only need the yields for fertilizer A and fertilizer B, not for all four of them. So I'm going to create two variables, yield A and yield B. Yield A because it's the yield for group A, and yield B is the yield for, group e, uh, for B. Measurement variable is yield, bracket, grouping variable is fertilizer, equal, equal. The level is A, in quotation marks, closing bracket. Similar for yield B. Yield, fertilizer, 
b. Variable of interest, grouping variable, level of the grouping variable. Okay, so that deals with creating a yield a and a yield b. Next, let's create a yield a and compare it to all the others together. So what these two allowed us to do is compare the yield of group A, fertilizer A, to the yield of fertilizer B. What I may also need to do is compare yield of group A to the yield of all the others put together. So I'm going to create yield A, exactly the same as above, and we'll call it yield O for other. How do we create yield O? It's just yield fertilizer not equal to A exclamation point equal test for e uh, inequality equal equal test for equality so what this second line does is it goes through all of the records finds all those records where fertilizer is not equal to a and for those it takes the yield and stores it into a new variable called yield o Perhaps we don't want to compare A to all the others. Perhaps we want to compare the yield of fertilizer A to the yield of fertilizers B and C put together. Here's how you would do that. First line's the same because it's just yield of A. We're going to call the second one yield BC. Yield fertilizer level. And that's a pipe. It's a vertical line so located just above the enter. It means OR, fertilizer C. So what the second line does is it looks for all those fertilizers that are B OR, fertilizers that are C, and for every one of those, takes the yield value and sticks it in the variable yield BC. Now we could actually do the second line in other ways just to see if we've got it, let's do yield CD. Yield fertilizer is C or fertilizer is D. What this does is it looks for all those records where the fertilizer is C or where the fertilizer is D. For all those records, it takes the yield and sticks it into the variable yield CD. Now, if we want to do a little bit less typing, we could do yield CD in two other ways. We could do yield CD as the fertilizer is greater than B, because C and D are both greater than B in the alphabetical process. Or we could do greater than or equal to C, where C and D are also greater than or equal to C in the alphabet. Now, the drawback to these last two is that it's not clear just from how they're written that they will hold just the yields for fertilizer C and D. Because if there was a fertilizer E, which I, there may have been in this data, I don't know, if there were fertilizer E, then this would be the yield for fertilizer C, D, and E. And this would be the yield for fertilizer C, D, and E. Only in this example are we explicit that yield CD is going to hold the yield for fertilizers C and D. And that's it. I think everything that's everything you need to know about partitioning your data. There's three places that I want you to focus. Let's go ahead and go to here. Measurement variable, grouping variable equal equal A, the level measurement variable, grouping variable, not equal to A. So that'll be for everything other than A. And here. Measurement variable, grouping variable, level, or grouping variable, level. So the not and the or are very important in this, and they will be very helpful for you now and in the future of this course. So hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself.